Hey guys, welcome to Gen C Codes. In this video, we're going to be discussing arithmetic operators in Java. One thing computer programs are excellent at is doing arithmetic. They can add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers very quickly. There are five main arithmetic operators that we're going to use from the Java language. So the first one that we have is addition. So I've gone ahead and initialized and declared and initialized a variable, and I've even assigned a value to it. Now the value that I've assigned is four plus five. Now what this means is basically the, the addition operator that we use in Java is a simple plus sign, right? And you can use this to um, add any two values, maybe even more than two, whatever. It's just simple addition. Now the second one we have is subtraction. For subtraction, we use the minus sign, or it's also called the dash or hyphen on a computer. Now, the next one which we have is multiplication. Now, multiplication, however, since we don't actually have the multiplication sign on our keyboards, we use the asterisk sign, right? We use the asterisk symbol. Um, and so this would basically be 8 multiplied by 7, which would give you 56. Now, the next one that we have is the division sign. For division, we just use the slope or slash, whatever you call it. So this would basically be 9 divided by 4. Now, I've purposely stored it as a double because I want it to give me a decimal value. Now, the fifth one, the last one that we have, is a remainder. So um, this gives you the remainder that results from dividing two numbers. So let's say it's like 6 and 4, like we've written over here, right? It would give you 2. And then with 15 and 4, it would give you 3. So the symbol used to represent this operation is the percent sign, as you can see over here. So on my keyboard, I have to do Shift 5, but it may vary according to your computers. Now, it may not be obvious right now, but the remainder operator is actually used extensively in a lot of computer programming. All right, so now let's talk about the order of operations. So what happens when an expression contains more than one arithmetic operator? Well, the order of operations, also called precedence of Java math operators, is similar to that of mathematics. The multiplication and division operators are evaluated first. Then comes the remainder operator. And then lastly, we have the addition and subtraction operators. Now, if two operators have the same precedence, like say multiplication and division, it is evaluated from left to right. For example, over here we have 24 divided by 2 into 3. Now let's remove these brackets over here, but let's say it's 24 divided by 2 into 3, right? So this 24 divided by 2 would be evaluated first because it's to the right, and then it would be multiplied by 3. So we'd have 24 divided by 2 which gives us 12, and then that 12 would be multiplied by 3 which gives us 36. Now I can, however, override the usual precedence by using parentheses like I had used previously. So it could be 24 divided by 2 into 3. Now this part, 2 into 3, would be evaluated first. So I'd have 2 into 3, which is 6, and then 24 divided by 6, which would give me 4. Two different values, but using the same operators. You can just use the parentheses to override the usual precedence. It's almost similar or almost the same as how we actually do it in mathematics. All right, so some examples of, arith of arithmetic operators in assignment statements could be when you're calculating the average score like I've put over here. So let's say you have three scores, right? You have score one, which is equal to 35, you have score two, which is 40, and you have score three, which is 32. Now, if I wanna calculate the average score, right? I don't wanna do it myself, I'm just going to let the computer do it, then what you're going to do is you'd create like an average score variable, first of all, then I'd add score one plus score two plus score three divided by three. Now the parentheses over here are very important because if I didn't have them, it would do score three divided by three, and then it would add uh, score two plus score one to the result, which is not what we want to happen. We wanted to add the scores first and then divide it by the total number of scores, which is three. So that's kind of an example, one example of where we could use the overriding of precedence and using the parentheses to override the precedence, right? Now the second example is actually where you can cal calculate the total cost. This is actually where you would need to use these operators, right? So again, you have number of tomatoes, five, tomato price is four. 
Now, again, if I don't want to do the actual multiplication or something, then I can just say total cost, so the total cost that I have to pay for those tomatoes is the number of tomatoes multiplied by the tomato price. Simple, right? And now, one question that you might have is, you know, okay, you can tell the computer to do it, but you can just do it yourself, right? And yeah, that is true. But the only reason you can do it yourself is because you know what this value is right now. In a lot of times in Java or any other computer programming language, you ask for user input. You ask for input from the user. You ask for some information from the users. So when they enter that input, you're not going to know what it is. The computer program, however, will store this information in that variable. So let's say I asked for some user input, which we'll learn how to do a bit later. But let's say I asked for the user to enter how many number of tomatoes they're going to buy. And then I also asked them to enter what the tomato price is. Then doing this would be very, very uh, beneficial because the program itself would have to calculate it and it would know how to calculate it. On the other hand, if we didn't do this, if we didn't have this option, it would be pretty much impossible to actually use user, uh, user input to calculate certain things and to actually use them in different expressions. Okay, so now the next thing I want to talk about is mathematical functions. So besides these operators that we just looked at, Java also has certain built-in mathematical functions or methods that you can use. Now I've made a function about, uh, I've made a video about functions and what they are. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out so that you'll be able to understand what I'm about to do next a little better. All right. So I'm not going to talk about all of math mathematical functions that exist in Java, but I am just going to discuss about three main and simple ones. The first one that we have is the absolute value function. This is sort of how it looks, the general format. So in math, the absolute value is the positive part of a number. So the function on Java is math.abs, and in brackets you have the argument. So if I said math.abs7 um, in the parentheses, it would give me 7. And if I said negative 7, it would still give me 7 because it is the positive part. It's essentially just what it is in math. So again, if I said something like negative 11.2, it would give me just 11.2, right? Um, now the next thing we have is uh, math square root. So the next function is to find the square root of a number. In math, the square root is a value that, when multiplied by itself, gives the number. So the function on Java is math.sqrt, and in parentheses you have the argument. Here the argument must be a non-negative double number. So if I said math.sqrt um, and in parentheses I put 4.0, I would get 2. If I said 36.0, I would get 6. Now the last function that we're going to learn is the exponentiation method. In exponentiation, a number is multiplied by itself a certain number of times. So if we multiply a number by itself four times, we say that the number is raised to the fourth power. The function for exponentiation is math.pow or math.pow and in parentheses you have argument 1 and argument 2. Here you have two arguments which are separated by commas. So um, notice that the pow stands for power and that there are two arguments. So argument 1 is the number that is being multiplied by itself while argument 2 is the number of times that the number is being multiplied by itself. Each argument and the return value are d uh, double type numbers. So let's say if I had math.pow or math.pow um, and in the arguments I had ar argument 1 as 4.0 and argument 2 as 3.0. I would get 64 because it would be 4 into 4 which would give you 16 and then 16 multiplied by 4 again which gives you 64. It'd just be 4 into 4 into 4 because it'd be 4 raised to 3. Similarly, I can also say math.pow um, and it, argument 1 could be negative 3.0, while argument 2 could be 3.0, which would give me negative 27. So these are just basically, these are the basic math functions in Java. And the next thing that we're going to discuss is called string concatenation. So obviously we can use arithmetic operators and numbers, but is it possible to use them on strings? Not all of them, but it is possible to use the plus sign. 
Now, many times in Java, you may want to take a string variable from one place and combine it with another string. The fancy term for this is string concatenation. It is basically just taking a string and tacking it on, uh, on the end of another. So for example, um, I've called, I've created a variable over here called cat dog, right? Now, over here, what I'm doing is I'm adding this string called cat and then I'm doing cat plus dog. Now what this would just give me is it would give me, and I'll show you this in a while, it would give me cat dog. That is literally the output of that. Because all it's gonna do is it's going to add the two strings, it's just gonna tack it on the end of the other, right? And that's kind of how string con uh, concatenation works. Let me just write that down here. string concatenation, right? And this is a pretty important thing a lot of times because you sometimes want to use it in the print statement and there are a lot of things that you may want to use it for. We'll learn um, all of that in the next videos. But yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one line maybe just to show you exactly what comes out. So. And here I'll just put maybe cat dog, right? If I want to print out what that is, and let's just run this, right? And it prints cat dog, exactly that. Why? Because cat plus dog, as I mentioned, that is the output. And you can actually run this program. You can put the system.out.println method uh, anywhere else you want to find out. So like I can even put maybe total cost here and I can run this and it'll give me 20 because 5 into 4 and that sort of thing. So you can just maybe kind of play around with this, um, add different variables that you might want to find out what the result is, what the output is, what um, Java thinks of it, and kind of what output you basically get. To see that be displayed um, and to see that explicitly, you can run the program and just have a look, right? So that's it for this video. I know we haven't really made a program yet, but it's important to understand the basics before we get into it. Next time, though, we'll create a simple but fun project. Thank you for watching. Happy coding!